And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making a white chicken chili. To go alongside that, we're gonna make like a garlic, cheesy biscuit bite to eat alongside that. And for dessert, which we're gonna start first with, we're gonna make a six layer bar and it's scrumptious and delicious. So let's get started on dessert because that needs to bake a while. I have one sleeve of graham crackers in this bag that I'm gonna uh, just crush up. If you, you know, you can buy graham cracker crumbs, but why do that? Just do this yourself. You just wanna crunch them up really fine. This is just one sleeve. You want about a cup. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. And I've got one stick of butter that I've melted on the stove. So just pour that in your bowl. Pour the butter over it, one stick, just butter melted. Mm. It's a good start for anything, isn't it? Now this bar, can be mixed up many different ways. Some people make it um, one way, some people add different things to it, and you know, that's okay. I've got one that I do sometimes at Christmas that I, I do like a seven layer type thing. Some people do five, but this one I'm doing six, and the number is depending on how many layers you've got. But the base is pretty much always the same. Now I have a four by 13 inch pan that I have sprayed with non-stick cooking spray. And I wanna just spread my cracker crumbs, my graham cracker crumbs, just spread them out into one smooth, even layer using your spoon or your fingers, whatever you wanna use. And that's layer one. Now, let's do layer two which is nuts. You can use any kind of nut you want. I'm using pecans, but you could use walnuts, you could use almonds. Um, you could leave the nuts out. Maybe if you don't eat nuts or you have an allergy or something, you could leave the nuts out if you wanted to. But I happen to love nuts. You could use a mixture if you wanted to. You could use, you know, whatever kind you like. I, my favorite actually is black walnuts. And so if you have some black walnuts, that's a very seasonal type thing. But if you have some black walnuts, you could use black walnuts. Your flavor will be stronger, but good. I love black walnut ice cream. That's my favorite, favorite ice cream. Dearly love this stuff. So then we're gonna just, that's one cup, and we're just gonna kind of spread those over evenly over our graham cracker crumbs. This could not be easier. And if you wanna make this ahead, absolutely you can make this dish ahead and just let it cool. It's perfectly fine. Now here's where you can use your imagination. You could use butterscotch, you could use toffee. I'm using peanut butter. I found some peanut butter chips in the grocery store. So I'm using the peanut butter chips. Again, it's one cup, just spread evenly over. My mother loves butterscotch, so if I was making this for her, I probably would put butterscotch but I'm making it for me and I like peanut butter. So I'm adding also my next layer. It's gonna be one cup of dried cherries. Now you could use dried blueberries, you could use cranberries, any kind of dried fruit that you like. I just happened in my pantry to have the dried cherries. You could use currants, you could use dates, you could use whatever you wanted. But I had these little sweetened dried cherries. So that's what we're gonna to use today. Over top of that, we're gonna add one cup of chocolate chips, whatever kind you like. I like dark chocolate. Um, if you wanna use semi-sweet or bittersweet, whatever kind of chocolate chip you like. If you wanted to do half white and half regular milk chocolate, you could do that, but some kind of chocolate. Over top of that, 
one cup of shredded sweetened coconut, which is, oh, I love, love coconut. I don't eat a whole lot of it because I have cholesterol issues and coconut's one of those things that's high in cholesterol, but I do treat myself occasionally. If I've been really good, I'll eat some coconut. <laughs> Over top of that, one can evenly poured of sweetened condensed milk. And I could eat this out of the can with a spoon. I love this stuff. Just pour it evenly over top of your coconut. And th what that will do is seep down in there and kind of bind it all together. Get every last drop out of your container of sweetened condensed milk. If you wanted to add some, do another layer, you could make another layer and put oats in there and have like an oatmeal type, mm, would be delicious. 350 degrees for about 30 minutes and then you're gonna take it out, let it cool and then we're gonna cut it into bars. So just put that in your oven for 30 minutes and just let it bake away, 350 degrees. Now, let's get started on our chili. Now I have a large stock pot here that I'm gonna preheat. Let me get that little bit of coconut off here. We're gonna preheat that pot over 300 and oh, 350 degrees, over like medium high heat. We're gonna chop an onion because most soups start with onion because it's a great aromatic, a great flavoring for soups. And this is gonna be a white chicken chili. Lots of different variations out here. This just is my variation of it. It's really kinda not, when you think of chili, you think of the traditional tomatoey based chili. And this is, doesn't have any tomatoes in it whatsoever. So this is not like a chili you would think. This is kinda really more of a, a stew, I guess. Uh, than a chili, but they always, you know, every recipe I've ever seen, ever, calls it chili. So that's what I call mine, but it's really not. It's really kind of more of a stew type uh, dish than a traditional chili. Not that there's anything wrong with chili. I love chili. One of my favorite things to eat, actually. Make it lots of different ways. Our pan is preheating, so let's get some oil in there couple of teaspoons, just a little bit, you know, enough to coat the bottom of either olive oil or canola oil, whatever you want to use. I'm, I've got just some, because the olive oil was sitting there, that's what I'm using. But you by all means could use uh, just some canola oil or vegetable oil. We want to sweat these onions. Don't really want to brown them, we're just going to kind of sweat them a little bit, which means just bring out their natural uh, sweetness and you know kind of soften them a little bit. We definitely don't want to caramelize them. That's not what we're doing here. So let's get that going. Now to that we're going to add some jalapeno and some garlic. I'm going to take a quick break. Just put my gloves on because my hands are sensitive to fresh peppers. We're going to take a fast break and I'm going to come back and we're going to chop this and get it in the pot. I'll be right back with you in just a second. chapter 23 verse 3 says he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake the word leadeth in that scripture means guidance God is truly your guide for life he will lead you down his paths for your benefit you know the word tells us that he is to be the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path and that he knows the plans that he has for us before we were ever born allow God to lead you down the path that he has chosen for you. Allow him to be your guide and your job is to simply follow him. Allow him to lead you down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Hey, 
And welcome back. Now all I've done is just cut these two jalapenos in half, and these are actually from my mom's garden. Picked them myself. I'm taking the seeds out because the seeds, most of the time, is where most of your heat is. I'm wearing gloves because my hands are a little sensitive to that fresh, uh, the capsaicin in the peppers. Isn't that funny how we can eat it and it doesn't bother us, but our hands sometimes. I, one time, I, the very first time actually, I ever tried to chop chilies without gloves. My hands burned for hours. So I, I always wear little disposable gloves whenever I am chopping up fresh chilies. So we've got two jalapenos, which honestly on the heat scale are kind of low. They're, I mean, they're, they got a little kick to them, but when you're talking fresh chili peppers, the jalapenos are, are way down on the scale. So let's get those in the, whoops, my garlic press, in with the, the onions. And I've got two cloves, let me take these off, two cloves of fresh garlic that I'm going to put into the chili. Mm, I love fresh garlic. It just, that flavor is no comparison in the fresh stuff and the pre-minced up stuff. I, I like the fresh. Okay. Let's kind of stir that around. Mm. Now, let's add our spices. We're going to add a couple of teaspoons of cumin dried, about a teaspoon of dried oregano. Dr oregano, by the way, a lot of people think of that as strictly an Italian herb, and honestly, it's used a whole lot in Mexican cooking. And then I've got about a teaspoon of just chili powder. I always put my spices in before I add my liquid because the oils actually cause the spices to bloom and makes them taste better. So I always do that and give them about 30 seconds before I add anything, you know, of a liquid nature. We've got one pound of boneless, skinless chicken that I've just cut up into bite-sized pieces. We're gonna add that, kinda let's give that just a little bit of a head start here, not much, cause I don't really want it to brown, I'm just gonna simmer it in the stock to kinda tenderize it a little bit. Let's add some salt and pepper about a tablespoon or so of kosher salt. If you're using table, regular iodized salt, you know, that you pour out of a shaker, half the amount. I used about a tablespoon, so you would want about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. And freshly ground pepper, as much as little as you like. I like a lot, so I put some in there. Now, oh, I wish you could smell this. It smells so, 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 so good. I'm gonna add one four ounce can of diced chilies. Now you get these over in the, uh, where you buy your taco shells and things like that in your grocery store. Ooh, that smells good. And I'm gonna add 32 ounces, just a carton of chicken broth. Just bought, store bought chicken broth. You can make your own if you want to. Find. I like the canned. Some things I like homemade, but that, you know, for most things, the, the store bought is delicious. And we're just going to kind of let that hang out and simmer for about, I don't know, uh, 25 minutes or so. Then we're going to finish adding up some beans. Let's clear our workspace here a little bit. Oh, we got some peppers here. Let me get my rag here. Now, to go alongside this, we are going to make just a simple little biscuit bite. And how we're going to do that is we're going to melt, I just kept my little pot here on the stove, another stick of butter. Just kind of put that on your, and this is one of those times if you don't have butter and you want to use margarine, you could. Um, I, I just honestly, I prefer butter. I think it tastes better and it's better for you. But if you wanted to use just some, you know, the marjoram, that would be fine in this particular 
recipe would be good. Now let's just let that melt. And we're gonna take just a regular can of biscuits. Couldn't be easier, could it? Can make your own if you want, but I like these. Couldn't use the frozen ones uh, here. You really just kind of need this can. I love the frozen biscuits, honestly. I just about as soon use those as make my own. And you want to take each biscuit and you want to cut it into four pieces, just like that. Real easy. Depending on how many people you're going to feed, because I promise you they're going to want to eat these. They are delicious. Just little biscuit bites. You could make them a little smaller if you wanted to. This would be a great little side dish to any kind of soup or stew or anything, really. We're making them savory. You could, if you wanted to do it sweet, you could take these and roll them in cinnamon sugar and bake them. Bel melted butter, cinnamon, and sugar, but that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to make them savory because we're using it as our bread to go alongside our chili. Yum. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Could be easier. Take a bowl. We've got a teaspoon of garlic powder and our butter is melting. Mmm. Smells so good. I love garlic. When I eat it, I tell you, I must smell like it for a month because I love it so good and it's good for you. Let's check our chicken here. See how it's doing. Oh, look at that, how good that looks. Mmm, yum. Let's let that kind of hang out. All right, we're gonna take our butter and put it in our garlic. I'm going to add just a pinch of salt because I think the salt brings out the flavors in the food. And I use unsalted butter. If you're using salted butter, you would not want to do this, but I'm using unsalted butter. Take a baking sheet. I love this. My new favorite kitchen helper is this nonstick aluminum foil. I love it. So I've got my sheet lined with that because I think it's a little bit easier. Your fingers, in this case, are your best tool. Just dip each piece of this down in that wonderful little garlic butter. Oh, yum. Yum, yum, yum. And put it on your sheet, on your little baking sheet there. And you want to kind of let this set before you bake it for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Kind of let those flavors uh, get into the dough about five to ten minutes. You could make this right here. You could do this part ahead of time if you wanted to and just, you know, let it set for, you know, probably up to like 30 minutes before you baked it off. If you're pressed for time, that would be perfectly fine. I'm going to take a quick break and just finish uh, putting these biscuit pieces in this butter mixture and I'll be right back with you in just a minute. And welcome back. Now I've got all of my little bites, um, you know, put in the in the garlic butter flavoring. Now here's you could do this one of two ways. You could grate your Parmesan cheese, which I'm, I'm I'm grating here on my board, and add it to your garlic mixture, or you could just do what I'm going to do, and that's grate it and then put it on top and let it just kind of crust over. This is by far my favorite cheese, but you could use any kind of cheese you like. I just happen to adore Parmesan cheese. So, but if you wanted to use Monterey Jack or um, whatever, whatever kind of cheese you like, just take each little biscuit bite and put just a drop of cheese on top. Oh, I love it. Smells so good. These little things, I promise you, are addictive, completely and totally 
addictive. You will want to make them all the time. Mixing up your flavorings, you could put any kind of herb. Uh, if you wanted to make them a little less garlicky, you could use like herbs de Provence and serve it alongside some minestrone soup. Um, would be yummy. You could use any kind of cheese that you like. Anything that you like, you could use on top of this. This just happens to be my favorite. But you could mix it up any which way that you like for your family. That's the, one of the great things about cooking is that you can customize it to whatever your family likes. And you know, I, I, now I, I am, there are some things with cooking, and I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit picky about. This is one of them. I really, really like fresh Parmesan cheese. And you know, it, at first your initial little investment may be a little bit more, but that wedge, I, this, this came in a wedge about, you know, about like that probably. I've had it six months and you see I still have some left over and I even use the rind. I, I use that in my soups and so forth. Let this set for about five minutes or so to kind of absorb all those flavors and get them down in your biscuit and then we'll bake them at 350 for about eight to 10 minutes or so. So let's check on our wonderful little pot of soup here, stewed chicken chili. Look at that, how wonderful that looks. Now, I'm gonna add beans. I'm using two different kinds of beans. I bought one can of navy beans, which I'm actually gonna take my fork and smash because I'm gonna use this as sort of a thickener, um, very healthy thickener at that, but I wanna kinda you know, thicken that stew up just a little bit. And I'm use, just gonna use the beans as my thickener. I've also bought two cans of great northern beans. But now you could use any kind of white bean that you like. You could use, you know, cannellini beans, you could use the great northern, you could use navy. You could even put some garbanzo beans, chickpeas, cecchi in Italian if you wanted to use those. Whatever you want. I'm using canned beans because they're convenient. Um, so I didn't want to add them too early. So you make sure that you don't add your beans too early. And I'm just really taking my time here to smash these beans up because I want that fiber, or the not fiber, but the, you know, the, the mealy interior of the bean to kind of come out. This is just one can of navy beans, and I'm adding that to my chili. Be careful so you don't splash yourself. This is an extremely healthy dish for you to be eating. The beans are good for you. And then my two cans of great northern beans. Oh, love them. If you have an issue with sodium, you might want to rinse them. I did not rinse my beans. But if you have an issue with sodium, you could by all means rinse your beans would be perfectly fine. Look at that, how good that looks. Look at that wonderful pot of stew here. We just kind of want to let this simmer for about five minutes or so. Really all we want to do at this point is let those flavors marry each other and get to know each other and let those beans heat through. We're going to get our biscuit bites in the oven. All right, now our bars are done and we took them out of the oven and you want them to be kind of golden around the edges like that. They need to cool for just a little while before we cut them into little bars, little squares. They are delicious. Here's our wonderful little biscuit bites as, as they come out of the oven. And I promise you, these little things are so addictive. They are so good. Mm. I could eat that whole plate. And our wonderful little chicken stew here, white chicken chili. Oh, so good. Yum, yum, yum. That's my bowl. Now, if you wanted to, you could top your chili with just some little green onions if you wanted. A little extra color and flavor in there. And you could also put some cheddar cheese on top if you wanted to put some cheese, more cheese, because I don't think you can have too much cheese in life. Yum, yum. If you wanted to put a little cheddar cheese on top of that, you could by all means put a little bit of cheese. Oh, 
so good. So, so, so good. Perfect meal for a, you know, a cold wintry day or a fall day. And honestly, I'm not, a, it doesn't have to be cold for me to want soups and stews. I eat them year round. I love soup of any kind. Let's try a bite. It's hot. Mmm. Oh, friends. That is so good. So, so good. But just a little, just a little bit of heat from the jalapenos and the green chilies. Fabulous dish. Try these recipes. Download them. Try them for your family and let me know what you think. And these little things, oh, addictive. Totally addictive. You probably want to bake two trays. Get two cans of biscuits on those because you're going to eat half of them before they get to the table. So here's our wonderful little menu. Got my mouth full. A wonderful little chicken chili. Our delicious six layer bars with our coconut and our chocolate and our peanut butter and our dried cherries and our graham crackers with the sweetened condensed milk and our fabulous little biscuit bites that could not be easier and are so delicious and so addictive for your family. Try these recipes, they're available on the website. Get in the kitchen and cook for your family, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Man. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.